Welcome to Electron Online. Another request from a viewer was this particular problem. It says that a one kilogram object is fired straight upward at 30 meters per second. If it only reaches a height of 35 meters, how much energy is lost due to the wind resistance? So here we have a quick picture. We have an object that's being fired upward. The object has a mass of one kilogram, an initial velocity of 30 meters per second, and it reaches a maximum height of 35 meters. So what equation should we use here? And I think the energy equation might be the best. So what we say is that the initial energy must equal the final energy. And so what goes into the initial energy? Well, it could be the initial kinetic energy, the initial potential energy, and it could also be energy added to the system during the problem. Now in this case, that will not be it because we're only firing it off, but let's go ahead and write it in anyway. So any work put into the system plus any initial potential, potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy, and of course that equals any final potential energy plus final kinetic energy plus any energy lost, and in this case it would be the energy lost due to the wind resistance, and this is what we're looking for. That is the question, how much energy was lost, but that's the equation that we need. Right away, we realize that there's no initial, there's no work put into the system. As soon as the object is fired, it will be given a certain amount of kinetic energy, so we don't have to include the work required to fire the object. We already have it accounted for in the kinetic energy. And since we're firing it from the ground, it will not have any potential energy when we reach the the, when we start off, right? So we start from the ground, so there's no potential energy because there's no height at the ground. When we reach maximum height, at that point, there will not be any kinetic energy because it will not be moving. So that will be zero, but there will be some potential energy. So in other words, the equation dwindles down to the initial kinetic energy, which will be equal to the final potential energy plus energy lost. So in this case, we could say that the energy lost is equal to the initial kinetic energy minus the final potential energy. All right, that will be easy enough at this point. It was just realizing that that's how we set it up. Now the initial kinetic energy will be one half mv squared, one half mv initial squared, minus the potential energy final will be mgh max, the maximum height that we reach, which in this case is 35 meters. So this would be equal to one half times the mass, which is one kilogram, initial velocity 30 meters per second squared, minus the mass, that would be one kilogram, g, 9.8 meters per second squared, and h would be, we said it was 35 meters, and of course the units for that will be joules, because the units of energy is joules. All right, let's work that out and see what we get. So we end up with, uh, well, let's see here, that's 900 divided by 2, which is equal to 450 joules. So we start out with 450 joules of kinetic energy. We subtract from that uh, 9.8 times 35, which is 343 joules. So the difference, 450 minus 343, which would be 107 joules of energy lost. So the wind resistance will have removed 107 joules in the flight path from the bottom to its maximum height. Now the question might also be, well, how high would it have gone if it had not, um, not encountered any wind resistance? Of course, that only happens in physics books. In the real world, there's always wind resistance. All right, we know that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. Now that comes when we have an object that's dropped from a certain height. So we have height initial and we drop an object down to the ground and at that point velocity on the ground is going to be equal to 2 times g times h and take the square root of that. So let's, that also works in reverse. When we have initial velocity what will be the height reached? So when we square both sides we get v squared is equal to 2gh so h is equal to v squared divided by 2g. So the height reach will be the velocity squared divided by 2g. The velocity squared, well, we have initial velocity of 30. We have to square that divided by 2 times g. 
and g of course is 9.8 let's just put in 9.8 there 9.8 so we get 900 divided by 2 which is 450 450 divided by 9.8 which is 45.9 meters so h equals 45.9 meters if there was no wind resistance but since it only went 35 meters some of the energy was lost how much 107 joules and that is how it's done Well, that is interesting because that will probably be a different amount. We would have to be told what the final velocity would be to find the energy on the way down, the energy loss on the way down. So typically the energy loss has to do with the velocity. And since it lost some energy on the way up, it'll be going slower on the way down. So probably less energy would be lost on the way down, but we wouldn't be able to tell until somebody told us what the final velocity is. And since we don't know that, we won't know the energy lost. Can't calculate the final energy. Nope, can't do it. Not unless we have more information.